Let's talk about the the Marcus Smith Twitter beef. I guess back to I'll the, keep the, it. I'll, I'll keep it so much short and sweet. I think we've said our piece on it. Uh, I obviously, <clears throat> I said during media this weekend that you know some of the things I said were probably regrettable for sure. It didn't need to get uh, as personal as it did. Um, and and yes, uh, I do admit that uh, the frustrations certainly stem from um, a lot of it stems from. Uh, you know, the negotiations or the lack of negotiations going on right now between uh, NASCAR and the teams. Um, you know, the, you know, my, my beef kind of with the SMI stuff is actually the opposite beef that I would have over with, uh, you know, NASCAR. I, I think that uh, while I don't like necessarily um, the uh, chunk of the pie that they take um, from the teams or, what have you, or the chunk of the pie that they give to the teams relative to who puts on the show. Uh, nobody goes to a racetrack and watches, uh, you know, an empty racetrack. They go to watch the stars, the cars, and the teams. Um, while I have a beef with that for certain, and, you know, ISC, which is NASCAR-owned tracks, and SMI, which is uh, Smith-owned tracks, um, you know, kind of share the schedule. I think it's like 60-40. Um what I, you know, have said is that at least ISC has reinvested um, the money that they've taken it back into the tracks. You look at, uh, you know, if you want to talk about the positives, you know, if you've been to a race at Richmond, Talladega, Daytona, Phoenix, uh, Michigan, over the last 15 years, you'd seen great upgrades to uh, garages, um, hospitality areas. Uh, fan experience areas. Um, it's just they've they've really done a good job. And then on top of that, all those tracks I just listed also all got repaves uh, in the last 15 years. And they've just done an absolute phenomenal job. Um, you can't say anything but positive about it. I think I was around when, yeah, I was. It was early, early in my career, but when they repaved Talladega, the pavers got a standing ovation at the driver's meeting. That was, that was one of the, I mean, I couldn't believe it. I drove on the track and I'm like, oh my God, this is incredible. Whoever did this job, because Talladega used to be pretty bumpy, had an old worn out surface. Um, you know, it was, it needed to be redone because if it ever rained, we'd never get on the track again because of weepers and stuff. But, you know, typically... You know, you, you, you know, in all those repaves, I think that what they did, NASCAR, is kind of take it all the way down to the dirt, regrade the dirt, compact the dirt, then put the, you know, a large layer of asphalt down. And I can't think of any of those tracks. Now, there are, there are, might be some small patches here and there that have been created over time through wear uh, that has happened. Uh, with on-track incidents, you know, when we wreck a car, like we dig into the track and it could cause things like that. But I can't think of any of those offhand. I left out Kansas. Kansas is also on that list of being, that got redone, um, built a casino right outside of turn two. You've seen the whole area around Kansas grow up quite a bit. Um, but the positives is, you know, a lot of these tracks, uh, especially the ones that NASCAR own, have, has done a fabulous job of, um, really making it, you know, keeping these, these tracks up to date because our fans just definitely expect more from, um, the fan experience than, than what they used to. Right. I mean, to ask your fans to just sit in aluminum bleachers for four hours, it's, it's a very, very tough ask, but they've got enough going on around the racetrack to, uh, to keep you entertained. So, um, hats off to them. They've done a great job. And, you know, on the flip side of it, you know, the, my separate, frustrations with SMIs. I don't I, I don't feel like that investment's really been made on their part. And surely you can combat that with, well, they did the Roval. I okay. I, I think the Roval's been played out now for a few years. Uh, I think everyone in the industry and probably fans would uh, rather have us back on the oval at this point. It was because the oval racing was so stagnant. Um so you know they took it upon themselves to do the Roval. Um I try to think of others. You could say, well, they brought back North Worksboro. Well, COVID brought back North Worksboro. They used COVID funds, so they got a bunch of money from the government to do that. So I'm a, they've always owned North Worksboro, but they finally 
um, you know, put the investment back in it. So that was good to see. And, you know, there, I'm sure there's more to the story for sure. Uh, we could probably list off a lot of things that they've done uh, in a positive manner. They redid Atlanta. Um, but I, I look at these tracks and I say, okay, well, let's look at the last three to four paving jobs that SMI has done. And they've had to put patches on the track before we have even had it, our race cars on it. And so I'm like, well, clearly, you know, you've got different um, contractors doing the paving at Sonoma. And, and Marcus said this. He's like, well, we got different pavers at Sonoma than we did at North Wilkesboro. And I didn't even know North Wilkesboro had a problem. And so I'm like, well, that might be your problem is you don't have any communication with your people that. But yes, it did have problems and it and it probably will in the future. Um, so it, it's frustrating because. You know, we know that they're taking a bulk of the, and whenever we go to an SMI track, they're taking the bulk of the money from from the TV revenue. And I know personally how much that I've invested in 2311. I, I would venture to guarantee you that 2311 has invested more in this sport than, I, than SMI has invested in the last 10 years. And we've done it in four years. Just this one team has invested more in this sport. So there's a problem there, especially when we get roughly, you know, half of what, what they get on any given weekend. These companies in NASCAR, you guys don't get like, is the right word for it, an audit? Like you can see how much money that you're reinvesting in the sport besides just, you know, obviously the, the picture of Sonoma and the track doesn't look good on, right. on Twitter, but other than, you know, public perception and seeing, you know, seeing is believing it, can you see, like, do, do these companies reveal how much money they're reinvesting? No, in they sport? do not reveal it. No, it's a secret. That, you know, we, again, this goes back to my frustration, but to be a little bit more transparent with you and everyone listening, is that, you know, NASCAR asked us to open up our books um, before, once we were doing these contract negotiations with them, and the RTA is probably going to cringe right now listening, but, like, we opened up our books and said, here's what our costs are. You know, this is this is what we need to survive. You need to, you know, give us back what it costs for us to to do this. Like that is that is a fair ask is for you to cover our cost to put on this show for you. And they won't do that. They they refuse to do that. And so that makes it very, very hard. Um, for the race teams and it's why these race teams swim upstream and why you've seen some uh, a championship team a few years ago go out of business um, so that's why it's very important to reinvest in the teams because the teams will will give that back um, in the sense of you know we'll do more hospitality there's a lot more things we could do um, to to reinvest uh, that money back into the sport um, but you know, we've we've really just put an emphasis over the last few years on just cutting, cutting this, cutting that, cutting this, and what we've done is cut content. Correct? We, we're not on racetrack as much. Um, we're, we got twenty minutes of practice, and and I heard Brad. It, it bugs me a little bit that Brad's like, "Oh, we just need to have more practice. It's not going to cost us anymore." Well, that's not true. Uh, that sounds like someone that's never had to make a cash call before <laughs> with his race team. Um, you have to buy. Uh, quite a bit more our hotel room we'd have to come to the racetrack earlier more than likely that's an extra night of hotel rooms um i know for a fact joe gibbs racing saves significant money when we cut practice um but I, we would be more than happy 2311 would be more than happy to go back to full practice and qualifying if we just got our damn expenses covered but we we're not it, it all falls on us um, the engine bills would go up because we can only run these engines so many laps. And so you can have an hour of practice, but I guarantee you the engine builders would say, okay, the way they're built, you only can run them for these 20 minute practices in these two races. Beyond that, we got to redo our engines because I can't have you out there running, you know, a hundred laps at, at Kansas on a, on a practice day, like the engine bills would go up. So we would see costs. Um, I think it's not factual to say that adding practice and qualifying full weekend like we used to have um, would not incur some costs. So we've cut content, and that is never, never good. The teams and the drivers are the content. 
Um, and so it's just part of a bigger beef I have with the whole situation. And when you ask, he says, well, why aren't we, you know, have you, have they opened their books to see what they're investing? I think probably they have between SMI and NASCAR. They probably are a little more transparent with each other more than they're transparent with us. So, you know, they came to all, when I to circle this back around is we came to them because they said, what is your expenses? And we laid it all out and we had all you these. You say we, that's you and the race teams? The race teams had four or five, you know, um, representatives on their financial side say, compare notes to say, what it, what is everyone really spending, right? To, to make this show happen. Right. Because we needed to create a, a case for NASCAR and show them why our business is is what it is. And so um, we came back and said, here's the number. And, you know, their offer to us falls way, way short of that, uh, which then puts tons of pressure back on us to then have to sell tons of sponsorship just to break even. Um, but, you know, when people also ask, well, why don't, you know, this whole Marcus thing, why don't you just say it to him in person? I did. I went to lunch with Marcus. And so when I try to explain to him that, well, here's why we have these struggles, Marcus, here's, here's our numbers. And, and when he asked me, well, what do you think we make? I says, oh, I can estimate. He's like, I said, but why are you being so secretive about it? I, I don't understand. Why can't you be as transparent as what we've been back to you guys in NASCAR about our cost? Why is it all so secretive all the time? It's secretive because it's a big number. They make a lot of money. And so that's, that's where my frustration stems from. And it's why I got triggered, <laughs> you know, when I, when I saw that picture of Sonoma, because I'm like, I'm no paving guy. Plenty of paving guys chimed in on what they saw. And all of it was that they didn't spend the money. They didn't do it right. And so why aren't you investing in to do it right? You know, that's, that was my, my problem with it. And, and it stems obviously from other stuff. So I, I definitely shouldn't have chimed in, I guess. I don't know. I mean, sometimes you need to get um, people talking about something to get change. Um, I, I don't, I certainly regret the, the, uh, the personal stuff for sure. Uh, but it's, it's just very agitating as someone who has invested a lot of money in this sport over the last four years to see how these three parties, uh, NASCAR, the tracks and the teams, um, how it's just frustrating to see how it's all run. It's not a hard task for sure. Um, it certainly does it cost more money. The engine bills are the same. I've been saying this forever.